This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather. Ho there. It's Jeff Kirk. Or welcoming you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, February the 28th. It's a former basketball star who actually was a legend for the Utah Jazz. Not named Carl Malone or John Stockton. He's a six-time NBA All-Star, two-time All-NBA selection, and a two-time scoring champion. Fifteen seasons there. He's been in the Hall of Fame since 2008. His name is Adrian Dantley, who is 69 years old. You may be thinking to yourself, that seems like a random name and all that, but this guy was better than... I don't think he is. So anyway, he was born in Washington and grew up attending high school in Maryland, Hyattsville. He went to the University of Notre Dame for basketball and was a first-team All-American in both the 75 and 76 seasons. He's still second on Notre Dame's career scoring list to this day and still holds the school record for free throws made and attempted in a career. He looked pretty good. He was a freshman when Notre Dame shocked UCLA in 1974 to end UCLA's 88-game winning streak, which is still the biggest in NCAA men's history. Danley would put up two very good scoring numbers, 30 points per game in 1975 and 28.6 in 1976. Rebounding. He was part of the Olympic team in 1976 that won gold in Montreal before professional school play. He declared for the 1976 NBA draft after his junior season at Notre Dame. But, fortunately for him, he actually did do, uh, graduate from Notre Dame in 1978. In the 1978, 1976 draft, he went 6th overall. As John Lucas, Scott May, Richard Washington, Leon Douglas, and Wally Walker all were drafted ahead of him. Practically everybody ahead of him, did not have a good NBA career. So th nor through New Orleans, via Phoenix, he ended up playing for the Buffalo Braves. Now, people think hmm, Buffalo had an NBA team. Yeah, they did. They did. They had an expansion team in 1970, and that Buffalo team would then move to San Diego to become the Clippers in 1978, and then they would move to L.A. to be the L.A. Clippers in 1984. So he was picked six overall by the Buffalo Braves. He was named the starter at small forward and did well, 20.3 points a game and the NBA Rookie of the Year for 1977. In a shocking move, Buffalo traded him to Indiana in exchange for shooting guard Bobby Billy Knight, excuse me, who was the second highest scorer of the 77 season. It was just shocking how Dantley became NBA Rookie of the Year and it was traded by Buffalo. In one of the worst moves Buffalo made at, when, at their time in Buffalo. So he played for 23 games, the Pacers, and actually had 26.6 points per game, which was pretty good. Third in scoring, but somehow Indiana needed a bigger presence in center. So they went for James Everts, trading Dantley to the Lakers. Dantley played 56 games at small forward after being traded from Indy to L.A. and finished second team scoring behind Kareem of Village Bar. That's when the Lakers were not really the best team in the world. I remember that bad. So anyway, Danley got injured, and that's how Jamal Wilkes jumped into the small forward position. However, Danley could pick up fouls, like draw fouls, which is good. And with the Lakers being happy with Jamal Wilkes, they decided to trade Danley to Utah for Spencer Haywood. It actually worked out for the Lakers. Jamal Wilkes was decent. Spencer Haywood played a good role off the bench for the Lakers in that 1980 season when they won the NBA title. Utah, it was just his peak and the perfect team. Anyway, Dantley reached his peak being a prolific scorer, leading the league in the 1981 and 1984 seasons in scoring, putting up 30 points per game. In between those seasons, he had a season in 1983 that he tore ligaments in his right wrist and missed 60 games. If it wasn't for that, he would have been much better. He was named Comeback Player of the Year in 1984 after winning the scoring title and coming back from that injury. He had six All-Star appearances in his first seven 
in his seven years with the Jazz. So he looked pretty impressive and all that. Unfortunately, Danley had a bad relationship with head coach Frank Layden, who would try to look for trade destinations and all that. So August 1986, after contract negotiations went south, he was traded to Detroit alongside two second-round picks for Kelly Tripuka and Kent Benson. Tripuka was a decent guy, but he would be better as Detroit. But anyway, Dantley went to the Eastern Conference and was effective. He didn't get the, sh the balls as much. As I say at Thomas, Joe Dumars, Finney, the Microwave, Johnson, and Bill Beer got the ball a lot more than him. Dantley actually was... Um, knocked unconscious in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Celtics, diving for loose ball. He played a few years for Detroit and then was traded to Dallas at the trade deadline in February 1989, alongside a first-round pick in 1991, which went nowhere, to Dallas for Mark Geyer. Daly had clashes with head coach Chuck Daly and GM Jack McCluskey over his demand for a focal point role on offense and more minutes than Dennis Rodman. Wow, Dennis Rodman was a good rebounder. So anyway, he, he missed out on the Pistons winning uh, winning team in 1989 for the NBA Finals. He played two seasons with Dallas, was released, and then signed with Milwaukee near the end of the 1990-91 season, playing 13 games for them. He went to Italy and basically retired. He played in the Low pro, similar to a power forward, despite him being a small forward, if you will. He put up 24.3 points per game, which was pretty impressive. So with his time with Buffalo, Indy, the Lakers, Utah, Detroit, Dallas, and Milwaukee, seven teams, he had 955 games played, 24.3 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game. In the playoffs, he would have seven playoff appearances, including 1988 playing for the Pistons, team that narrowly won that narrowly lost the championship to the Lakers. So yeah, he played for those guys and did quite well. In the playoffs, he had 21.3 points per game, 5.4 rebounds. Well, of course, with Milwaukee, he didn't really play that well. Utah, despite the spat and all that, with Dantley and all that, decided to retire as number four in 2007. He was named to the Hall of Fame in 2008. He became a Denver assistant coach for eight years. And all that. So anyway, Adrian Dentley, sure he doesn't seem like a big name, but hey, a two-time NBA scoring champion and a guy who helped Utah become the prevalent team, of course, after Pete Maravich left and before Carmelo and John Stockton got in. You know, you got to fill the gap. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond Adu.